the other one that you had asked about it was was rear riser landings and that's that's a great topic i love teaching that uh but it, it has to begin with with the rear riser stalls we had, we had talked about this uh a few weeks ago i know uh, mike and scott were there for that but to to explore the stall on your rears where you add add those rears slowly up way high you know above three grand and and you feel the shutter it kind of shakes it's because after the d lines right behind the d lines that's just fluttering because you're not pulling down on that right you're only pulling down on the c's and d's and so you'll feel that flutter as the tail starts to shake and then boom the bottom drops out right the whole everything from the center line of your parachute to the back just goes away it just compresses towards the center of the canopy like an accordion so like the back legs on the chair broke boom you go that way so you got to figure out how deep that is you know, in, in terms of the mechanics always grab in the same place every time so you have a consistent feeling push those rear risers and you feel the shutter and there's the stall and then in your rehearsals you'll want to do that same thing where you push the rear risers to level flight you'll feel it load up it gets heavy you'll feel the change of direction of flight you'll see the pitch change and then don't let it stall go almost to the point there right? it shutters a little bit but it doesn't solve then lift your hands up a little bit right so you, that's the rehearsal is to be able to to push that flare without ever crossing that line into stall um and it's it's quite common when people pull on the rears they lean back and you know that what that's going to do to your landing gear right <laughs> so so you have to force yourself to stay forward um, and if you grab this way well sort of monkeying your way around this way that's fine others like i i always keep these fingers close so i don't drop my toggles i had another guy just uh, been working with this week who's in a neck brace and everything because he dropped the toggle a couple days ago um so like this and i grab my rear risers with i sort of wrap my thumbs around from the back sort of dragging the riser against my arm so i know it's the rear it's not the front and i grab up top and then i go this way i'm pushing my head forward and i'm lifting my knees up and i'm sweeping my feet back and that way in the process of pitching i'm i'm already in a landable um, attitude as far as the pitch of my body um, and of course you have to recognize that the, the process of adding rear risers to achieve level flight is a much smaller uh, mechanics than toggles mm -hmm. a lot less in many canopies you pull down just like three inches and boom you're in level flight so you got to figure that out <laughs> you know it's because typically when people do their first rear riser landing um, they do plane out high they level off too high and now you've got a parachute that has a higher stall speed right because you don't have flaps right? toggles or flaps and so the stall speed now is faster and the, the angle of attack at which it stalls is lower so you're likely to have it you know put you on your back if you flare high so if that's the case well you go Whoop, that's too high and you wait till you're a low you know a little lower before you finish that process and you know where is this line that i don't want to cross where it's going to dump me um, and that's just through rehearsal um, to refine the altitude i definitely recommend flying in formation with another canopy somebody that's got a similar enough parachute to you that you don't have to work hard to stay together and you both flare at the same time but they flare on brakes and you flare on rears again and again and again and you're getting a sense of you know oh wow i keep planning out above him all right that means that it, maybe i'm giving too much you know and i'm pulling down too far that maybe i only need to, or maybe i'm climbing you know mm -hmm. so it's, it's going to give you that sense the other one of course is a cloud to get yourself near a little puffy and you just wait 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 till you're near the cloud and pitched on the rear risers sure why not um and eventually you'll get to the point where you're like yeah i feel pretty good about this then you wait for a day where the winds are medium not really windy you know where it's turbulence usually comes with strong winds not always not zero wind though you don't want to do your first rear riser landing in a no wind day um, you're more likely to stall the canopy out because if you've got no wind then you have to fly that parachute all the way to very high angle of attack to reduce your ground speed to anything that's reasonable whereas if you have a headwind all you got to do is slow it down to the speed of the wind right 
And given the the higher stall speed associated with the rear riser input, it, it makes sense. Um, and uh, and the last thing I would add to that one is after you've done all your rehearsals up high, uh, you know, in, you, over many many jumps, maybe many hundreds of jumps. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You grab those rears after opening and you fly the whole jump on the rears. I'm not saying you should drop your toggles so you're not tempted, you know, that would be dumb. But just grab the tops of the rears and fly the whole jump, all rear risers through the pattern, everything, so that you don't get into the trap of that one young lady that I had, uh, gosh, it was close to, close to 20 years ago in uh in Voss Norway where she she wanted to land on the rears for the first time she had about 500 jumps I remember she had short blonde hair sweet little thing little freckles um she got a little turbulence on the downwind leg and it scared her so she dropped the rears because I told her just get on the rears stay on the rears fly it all the way through she dropped the rears and then got confused and she put it on final approach and flared with what was in her hands, which was the front risers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So she didn't die, but she did break her back. Thankful for uh, the good medical system up there. It doesn't cost them any money, but yeah, she, I mean, she was fine. She recovered. She got back in the air and all that stuff, but God, you know, it's just a little oversight. Which is, again, why I, I repeat that idea of when you go for your risers, any of them, you don't just go straight up to it without looking. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you don't have the, the time to look, you know, because you're down low and you just want to tweak the angle of attack a little bit to get to the target or something. I do that all the time where I'll be at 50 feet on it. You know, you just tweak them a little bit to get over the fence or something. I sweep from the back. Going for the front, sweep from the front, up from the front. So, so you get that muscle memory where you're exaggerating the process. So there's no way you can mix them up. You want that first rear riser landing to be your choice. You know, where you know, oh my God, I broke a steering line. You, know, you want to have already done that when you finally get around to that toggle knot that you tied in correctly and it slips off or whatever. I had one guy release both of them. <laughs> he had toggles in his hands with brake lines trailing. And he had never landed on his rears before. He was shocked. He said he really, he, he actually kind of hurt himself, landed on his butt. So lessons learned, you know, a lot of these things that are that are so valuable that are in our blind spots come from somebody getting hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, skydiving has been around long enough that, that most of those traps have been, you know, clarified. As long as you're having fun, well, do everything.